Simone, you've had this journey from the Olympics and then going on tour with gymnastics. Now you're on a book tour. Your life is so filled with so many events. What's it been like? Um, it's been crazy. It's been a whirlwind. I'm always busy. Um, there's never enough time at home, but the traveling's been great. We've gone to do so many cool opportunities. Do you feel like you've even been able to just enjoy the fact that you're this amazingly accomplished Olympian? I don't think there's been like one time where I could sit down and think about everything that's happened. It's been so crazy, but I know what we accomplished and it's been amazing. What's something you think that we don't really know about gymnastics that you wish people would know? I guess that it's a year-round sports so even when we're not competing we're still in the gym training like up to 32 hours a week. Are there days where you're just like I do not want to train today <laughs> like I just want to Netflix? <laughs> yes there are days where you're just like I just want to stay home like can I please skip practice but then you think about the goals that you have and you're like okay this day will make me better. I loved watching all your you and the teammates um, hair makeup every time and outfits and everything. How do you guys decide what your looks will be for each competition? With the Leos our coordinator gets with whoever the company, the leotard company, GK, and she picks it out. So we just kind of decide on which days you're wearing this or this, but the makeup and the hair, we do it ourselves. So we'll just like stand there in the mirror and be like, do you guys like this? Do you like this? So we do it ourselves. Is there anything surprising about your routine in the morning? Not really, but I'm a morning person, so I guess I would surprise some people. Depending on like what day it is and where I'm going, like whenever I would train, I would get ready and then go to the kitchen, make breakfast, and then leave. But like on the weekends, I would like go eat and like get ready later on. At what point in your career did you think, I think I might actually be able to go to the Olympics? Probably not until 2013, um, whenever I was selected for the Worlds. I was like, oh my gosh, like the girls from the past Olympics have gone to Worlds and I was like, okay, I'm competing against Olympians. I was like, maybe I could do it one day. Wow. Was it something that you always dreamed about or at that point it became something that you were dreaming about? Um, I think everyone as a kid dreams about it, but there are only five slots that uh, make up the Olympic team, so everyone has those dreams, but then once you're pretty serious about it, you realize how real it becomes, and you're like, wow, so it's kind of crazy. What would you say is the difference between just having the genetics for something so great and working hard because you are like equals perfection. <laughs> like Simone Biles, we say equals perfection in gymnastics. How much of that do you think is just how your body is and your mind and focus and how much of it is because you train extra hard? Well, I believe like you can have all the talent in the world, but if you're not physically and um, mentally strong, then it the two have to go together to combine a good athlete. Um, so I think it's part of dedication and hard work. It's not just talent that got me where where I am. Before the Olympics, you were well known in the gymnastics field and we were all starting to notice you like Facebook videos going around like, look at this girl, she's so good. But since the Olympics, I know it's been completely different for you where everyone recognizes you. What are the best parts about that and the worst parts about that? I guess the best parts are like the little perks we get, like sometimes places will give us like free dessert and stuff like that or we get invited to cool events, but the, I guess the down part is like if I'm eating dinner, people come and interrupt and like that's like my dinner time, like my family time, um, but other than that, it's been pretty good. Maybe you're getting sick of this question about Zac Efron. You know, for all of us, if we have a crush growing up, it's like you and your BFF know, but for you, the whole world knew. <laughs> Is it something you kind of regret sharing or are you glad that you shared it with everyone? Um, I'm glad that I shared it because like I got to meet him so that was such a cool opportunity but other than that they they like make me seem like I'm crazy I'm like it's just a crush. <laughs> now that you met him were you kind of like okay I'm done with the crush I met him I'm moving on or are you like no I'm still totally crushing on him. No I'm still totally crushing on him. <laughs> Do you have anyone else that you'd like to meet that you kind of think is cute or that you really admire? Odell Beckham Jr. He's very good looking. I want to meet Steph Curry. If you were going to prom who would you invite to go with you? Oh gosh, my prom years are over, but I don't know. like your prom date material. Would it be Zach or would it? Oh, nice. Yeah, if I can't, like, since everyone knows, my first one would be Zach. We just have to get Miley out of the way. <laughs> yeah. You've written this book, Courage to Soar. In the book, you talk about more than just gymnastics, where you've come from, how your life has come about in the gymnastics world and before. What inspired you to write this book in the first place? 
I think what inspired me or what made me want to write the book was that my story is out there in so many places, but it hasn't never come from me. Um, so I thought that was most important because everyone reads stuff online and some of it isn't true. So I figured if I put a book out, then it's from me so they know it's true. Either you're a really fast writer or you've been working on this for a while. <laughs> Which one? So since February, we started working on it. And then we obviously had to wait till the Olympics were um, finished to do the final chapter. What's your favorite chapter? I think my favorite chapter is still the Olympic chapter just because it's fresh, it's new, and it just happened. I know in your book you talk about how you were in foster care and you were adopted by your grandparents and how you had some ups and downs throughout your life and a lot of people experience similar things. Um, what about that do you feel like is so important? I think it's important for them to realize, even though I am an Olympian, I was where they were at one point. I just didn't pop up onto the scene. Like I had to work really hard and I started at the bottom. I started whenever I was six years old and it didn't become like a serious thing till I was in eighth grade um, because the next year I had to decide to homeschool. And so I really think that any one of them can go where we went. What do you think is your key to staying so positive and humble at the same time? Um, well, I think it's my parents and growing up in such a unique and hard sport, um, you have to stay positive. What would you say to someone who's having a hard time staying positive? I think everyone goes through their ups and downs and it's normal, so once you're at a low, you're always going to come out from it, so don't think you're going to stay there. It's so exciting because you're meeting fans all around the world. What's one of your favorite things about meeting fans? I think their reaction and getting to talk to them and getting to know them, how similar we are, even though like the gymnastics world is crazy and they think of me as some like big celebrity. I'm still normal and I think that's um, what they realize once they meet me. You've written a book. You've achieved amazing Olympic results. You're a world champion. No, you met Zac Efron, you met Kim Kardashian, Beyonce. <laughs> what are your next goals? Um, so far it's the book tour and then I'll take a break from gymnastics for a little while, spend some time with my family, go on vacations. What would be your message to people who are looking up to you and watching the interviews and everything? What do you hope that they take away from your book and from you as a whole? Um, just to work hard and go after your goals and dreams because yeah, it seems out of reach but it comes sooner and sooner as soon as you start working towards them. Remind yourself every day of those goals and your dreams because I think that really helps. Like every day I woke up knowing that the Olympics was like in the future that motivated me every day so once you have that mindset you just like have the motivation to do anything.